So it's been a while since I griped about C++ in a video, but I just recently came across a reminder of why I think C++ can be so frustrating for new programmers. So today we're gonna to talk about it, a little bit about why this is, and maybe a little bit about what you can do about it if you have no choice and you're stuck with C++. Welcome back everybody. Yes, today I'm picking on C++ again, and it's not because I hate C++. I know some of you think I do. I really like C++. I use it all the time. Well, I shouldn't say I really like it. I don't mind it. I think it's a fine language. I just think it's very problematic for absolute beginners. I mean, once you're a seasoned expert, use whatever you want, use what works best for you. And really I've been thinking I probably should make a video where I gripe about C, which that's probably gonna happen at some point. But that's not today's video. So for today, I wanna jump into a little code example. Okay, so what we're looking at here, this is a fairly simple, pretty straightforward C++ program. Hopefully I haven't offended anyone's C++ style sensibilities. Actually, honestly, I don't really care because that's not the point of this video. The point is that this is the sort of thing that I recently saw a new programmer working on in their C++ based intro class. And I have simplified this example a bit from what they were working on, mostly just to make the video shorter and less tedious. But the point is they were working with a class. In this case, I've called it person. And the class has some members. In this case, I just have one member. I'm gonna call a name, it's a string. And up here we have one constructor. It basically initializes that name. And we've also overloaded the insertion operator, which might look a bit crazy, but it's not that crazy, at least as far as operator overloading goes. Okay, actually, while I'm here, let me make a quick detour. This isn't my main gripe. This isn't the point of this video, but it is a bit crazy that this brand new programmer was actually doing operator overloading like this in an intro program. And maybe this is not a C++ thing per se, but all you C++ instructors out there, don't throw stuff like this at your new students. They don't understand what the heck they're doing. At least that's been my observation. It's cool, sure, to give them the ability to use C out to insert these objects directly. But at least my observation is they're mostly just copying and pasting your example and they probably don't understand anything that they're actually doing here. Okay, back from my detour, calming down. The point is this method just allows me to use the typical style of printing to see out without some kind of conversion step. What it's saying is if I use the insertion operator with an O stream and a person object, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm just gonna take the name and print that out. And I could of course do anything I wanted in here, but this is all we're doing for now. And of course we're returning the stream or a reference to the stream and that allows us to chain things. Also, if anyone's new to friend, maybe that's another topic we could talk about in a future video, but friend just allows me to access the private data members of the object that I'm passing in. Okay, so that's my person class, nothing really complicated down here. If we come down to main, you can see that basically I create three person objects, Jacob, Eliza, and Barb, and I have a vector of persons or people, VP, and I'm going to add these three persons to that vector. And then down here, I'm playing around with the find function. So the find function here just allows me to search this vector from the beginning to the end. And in this case, I'm looking to see if P1 happens to be in the vector. And so in this case, I'm looking for P1, but I could be looking for any person object out there. It doesn't really matter. This is mostly just me playing around with the find function and it's gonna return this iterator IT. And then down here, I can check to see if IT is not the end, meaning, so it would be the end if it made it all the way through the vector and didn't find what I'm looking for. So if this is not the case, then I'm gonna print out person found and we'll print out what the iterator points to, which is just going to be the person object itself. And otherwise in our else clause down here, we're just going to print out that the person wasn't found. And of course, some of this iterator stuff is also maybe a little bit advanced to show brand new students, but it still seems to show up in a lot of intro material that I see students dealing with. But so I can gripe about that either way, this this example is pretty simple, right? We have a vector, we're gonna add some objects to a vector and then we're going to use find to try to find to see if an object is in the vector. Also, I have a make file right here, pretty simple, very straightforward, nothing fancy, just basic compiling clean targets with a few different variables up here at the top. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem is this, let's say that I'm a beginning programmer and I actually get to this point. I get all this code, I managed to get it all written amid all of the iterator stuff and the operator overloading. And if you're having a hard time believing that a beginning programmer gets here. Let's let's just actually, okay, so we're just going to cut out the operator overloading because yeah, let's make this as beginner as we can. And let's just make a, instead of two string function, 
and make this const, and then we're going to return name, okay? Happy, that's much simpler. And then of course I'll have to come down here and instead of doing this, I will have to call to string. Okay, so this is even simpler, you know, we're even more beginner friendly. We've gotten rid of my gripe about operator overloading. So let's say that I got this far, okay? Now everything looks okay, I'm really excited about my program, and I come down here and I try to compile it, and I get this. This is like 60 lines of error output. Over five thousand characters of very detailed information about code that I've never seen in files that I'm not aware even exist and dealing with things that I don't understand. This, my friends, is a complete disaster. And yes, the colored text here does help a bit as we comb through the mess that is this absurdly obtuse error message. It does show me right here that my error has something to do with equivalence. But frankly, I don't recognize this code. And honestly, from my observations, most programmers, most new programmers at this point are done, right? Like, find a happy place, find a happy place. I mean, where do you start Googling this error message right here? So the brand new programmer basically has no choice but to try to guess or ask for help, maybe from a TA or from their instructor. But things get really bleak when you're right here as a brand new programmer with C++. And the issue for anyone who's actually wondering is that find, so if I come back down here, is that find, the find function needs to be able to have a way of comparing different objects, different person objects, and it doesn't have a way to test whether or not two person objects are equivalent. It just doesn't know how to compare them. So this error message down here is correct. It's precise. It tells you exactly what the problem is and where it's happening. But while this message is all these things, it's a complete disaster for beginners. It's super long. It's overwhelming. It's confusing. Without fairly deep knowledge about how things work, it doesn't tell you what's wrong with your code. And this isn't an isolated case, folks. This sort of insanely long error message shows up all the time in really simple C++ examples. And some of the C++ apologists out there are gonna be thinking, well, that's on the compiler, not on the language. Why doesn't the compiler just print out more helpful error messages? And it could. To be fair, error messages in C++ have actually improved a lot over the last few decades. And of course, as we've seen, output coloring also helps a lot too. But this here is still an extremely challenging problem. There's a reason why it's still really complicated and that's because C++ is a really complicated language and without some sort of contract system where the compiler knows up front that you can only call find on objects that can be tested for equivalence, it's not an easy thing for a compiler writer to infer what you should have done. Now that's not to say they shouldn't try, please try C++ tool writers. Think of the children, but I don't expect this sort of thing to change in the near future. So anyway, before I get more carried away, let's fix this program. So just so you can see in case you're wondering how to fix this bug, it looks like we are going to have to come up here and do some operator overloading after all. So basically we can come down into our person class and create an operator or overload the equivalence operator. And basically all we're saying here is if you want to test for equivalence with a constant reference to a person, so this P, this is the one we're comparing the current object to. Then we're just going to return this name equals P dot name. So this is just basically checking to see if the names are the same. So for my purposes, I'm gonna say, if the names are equivalent, the person is equivalent. Of course, people are more than just their names. So in a more complicated example, this might be more complicated, but for this example, this is gonna work for me. And so now, now that I've defined this little operator up here, I should be able to come down here. First, we'll save it, and then I'll come down here and we will compile it. And sure, it compiles without any trouble. And if we run it, you can see, okay, person found Jacob, so it seems to work. So after all the trauma, our story at least did have a happy ending. And that, my friends, is another reason why I don't recommend C++ for beginning programmers. Because it's like learning to drive a car that has a million different controls, all of which can potentially light the car on fire, and you have to control the engine valves individually with your feet. But okay, what do you do if you don't have any choice? You're in a program that only teaches intro classes in C++, you're stuck. Well, okay, here's the best I can do as far as advice. When you do come across some kind of crazy error message that looks like this, the first piece of advice is to take a deep breath. Resist the urge to run for the doors and then stop and look at the error message. Lean into all of its glorious, ridiculous nonsense. Hopefully you have a terminal that colors your output so that you can actually see the red here. That's gonna be really key. This will help you see somewhere in the middle of this wall of text where the actual core issue is. So in this case, it would tell you it's something to do with equivalence. And then from here, what you wanna do is to try to see if you can figure out what 
part of your code this relates to. So in this case, I can just look right above the error message and I see that sure enough, this seems to have something to do with find, which I am calling. Occasionally you might find clues about where this actually relates to your code after the error message as well. But then basically what I would try to do is to try to connect the two. So generally a function or method that you're calling is expecting something that you haven't given it. And then once you've figured out roughly where this error is coming from, then I would look at the documentation for find and see what it expects. It probably describes somewhere in the documentation for find that the things that you're comparing need to have the equivalence operator overloaded defined for those objects. And of course, I'm sure this advice isn't going to work for everyone, but best of luck, my friends. If you stick with it, you're going to survive this. And the good news is people who learn with C++ and actually survive actually turn out to be pretty decent programmers. So hang in there. Of course, like this video if you found it helpful. Subscribe so you don't miss next week, and I will see you all next week.